Welcome everyone to this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio. I'm Tim Grady and I'm here with Lou Weiss, the founder of Manufacturing Talk Radio and also the president of All Metals and Forge Group. And today we're going to be interviewing Anthony Nieves, who is the committee chair for the Institute for Supply Management's Services Report on Business. It'll be an interesting report. Some of the things we've been talking about for the last six or eight months are beginning to show up in the report. Anthony, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. And Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to both of you gentlemen and to the listeners as well. So Anthony, how in the overall does the report look? I'm, I'm getting the sense that we're uh, now beginning to move into that contraction territory we've been talking about for several months. Well, the release uh, this morning came in at 49.6 on the composite index, down 6.9 percentage points. So it definitely has everyone concerned about uh, moving below the 50 baseline for uh, the sake of this report indicates that we are in contraction territory. Um, and let me talk a little bit about what contributes to that. We know that the four indexes, the sub-indexes that make up the composite, business activity, new orders, employment, and supplier deliveries. Business activity at 54.7, it's down 10 percentage points. But keep in mind, you know, we were very strong all through 2022. Business activity is still in growth uh, territory, and that's because of a good holiday season, as indicated by our respondents. New orders at 45.2, down 10.8 percentage points. Now, we keep in mind that this tells us what's in the pipeline going forward. And there's some contributing factors to this uh, being down 10 percentage points. And if you think back to previous shows that we've done and uh, previous reports indicated that um, our respondents were accelerating some orders as far as quantities and frequencies based on issues with the supply chain and logistics. And they're starting to correct and adjust in that regard. Employment also has a couple of different perspectives going on here. Uh, we have it at 49.8. It's down 1.7 percentage points from 51.5. It's a dichotomy. We have certain industries that are cutting back. We see that in the headlines today, information technology arena, layoffs, whatnot. Whereas you can look at another industry such as healthcare and social assistance, they can't backfill positions because there aren't any uh, in the labor pool to fulfill the open positions, uh, for example, clinicians. So then we look to supplier deliveries, the last component of this composite index. Our respondents are indicating that the supply chain is improving, a legit, improved logistics, um, improved capacity. So deliveries are faster, 48.5. So we're just under the baseline on the composite index. I'm not trying to rationalize it or be the consummate optimist, but we're just right there on the cusp. And there's some variables contributing to that. We know that one of the strongest industries, the, the largest contributor to GDP is real estate rental and leasing. And if the timing of this going into the year end, that usually has a pullback as well as the interest rates and other variables that have contributed toward uh, uh, that uh, industry uh, contracting for the uh, month of uh, December. So that's kind of just a quick overview of things uh, as what's related to uh, what relates to this report. Anthony, what are your respondents saying based on what they're feeling? Well, this is a good indication right here from agricultural, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Business is slower than usual, seems to be a three or four month trend. We expect it to pick up after the first of the year. If the past few years have been different than most others, as we know with the pandemic, so we have not seen the typical historical trends that we had in the past. We typically see this nice buildup going into the holiday season. Then we have a little bit of lull post-holiday. Post -holiday and then it picks up toward the end of January into February. So January is typically that pivotal month. So that kind of indicates right there, uh, that comment from that respondent as to what we can foresee, coupled with what we had uh, when we discussed the Tim annual forecast just recently on the show. Is there much going on in December in agriculture, fishing, you know, recreation, 
I mean, it's cold. Nothing's growing. Yeah, it is cold. I think that, you know, it, this, this, when you look at this sector, you see how eclectic, how diverse all these industries are compared to manufacturing. Manufacturing, yes, you have various industries, but they're all in production and producing. You have a difference of industries that deal with either tangible goods, services, or both. And which makes it a little bit, a little bit harder to pinpoint exactly uh, what's the input and output and it, it varies from industry to industry and company to company, even within those industries. So to your point, uh, we know that retail holiday season strong. We know that, as I mentioned earlier, real estate, rental and leasing year end, not as much activity. They tend to pick up more post-holiday. So we'll have to see how things trend out moving forward. Uh, one month does not make a trend. One of the interesting points, um... I noticed was that the uh, the high and low for the year 2022, uh, and this this month's uh, number was pretty much in the middle of the high and the low for the entire year. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I think when you look at uh, overall, uh, again, this this report this month didn't quite hit expectations of some. I really don't have expectations from month to month. I'm always surprised when I look at the numbers. I shouldn't say surprised. I don't know where they're going to be. And it's because the companies and the, and the respondents that are part of our business survey committee, they have a good indication of what's going on. They have a true indication of what's going on in their respective companies and industries. And so it's hard to differentiate that from you know, not glancing at headlines and everything else that we see on a daily basis. And this report, as we know, tracks so closely to GDP year over year. So when I say that I don't know where it's going to be because I, I'm not working within those respective companies or those industries, I'm looking at the same uh, external information that we all see in whether it be in mainstream media or research reports or whatnot. So I'm always, uh, when I see this report, I'm like, really truly reflective of what's going on right now uh, business in the business environment and how it impacts the economy. So to answer your question, uh, I look at this as yes, it's, it's, it's middling as far as the information that we see in front of us, but uh, it's also consistent with what our respondents have been saying all along. There's a bit of uncertainty still out there, but yet they believe that the business conditions is still favorable for moving forward and continued growth. This past year, we've had a terrible time with inflation uh, and the likelihood, likelihood of it to improve or not is still a questionable item, even though it seems to be going down. Uh, does the uh, your respondents comment on that to any great degree as to how it's affecting them? And looking at the respondent comments, the pricing is still strong out there. Uh, we can see that uh, evident by the uh, prices index at 67.6, even though it's moderating, it's still a, a very high level for that index. And the thing is that, you know, I was asked this question earlier about inflation as well as stagflation. And I won't hinge my thoughts on that just for one month. You know, I mentioned earlier about how does this trend out? I think there are too many good things happening right now where we're seeing some pricing uh, where prices have eased a bit. We know at the pumps, we know raw material costs have come down, which is tied to world markets. And Lou, you know that better than anyone on the manufacturing side. And we can look over and glance at the prices index on manufacturing and see where that has started and come down. So it takes a while to pull through the supply chain. And again, uh, I touched on the fact that this sector is more about a combination of labor and product cost that makes up that total cost of ownership versus just reliance on uh, straight world market commodities. Anthony, your report is a uh, aggregate of, I believe it's 18 industries, correct me if I'm wrong, or 18 sectors. How many sectors are reporting growth in this particular report? 
Yeah, you're you're right on, uh, spot on. It's a, it's 18 industries that comprise the services sector, and 11 of the 18 industries are reporting growth. Key thing is that, and I, I pointed this out on the uh, teleconference this morning uh, with the release, that two of the industries within the top five, real estate, rental and leasing, professional scientific and technical services, they uh, contracted for the month. So that's kind of pulling that back a bit when you look at their weighted contribution uh, to this report. And coupled with, um, you know, that's that same holds true on the business activity side, but mostly when you look at it from the composite um, index perspective. I do want to remind <laughs> that this report is available at ismworld.org if you want to really delve into the details. For your particular industry sector, I think it's important that you gain that, uh, that depth of understanding since we don't have time to get into uh, enormous depth in it. Anthony, what's happening in terms of imports and exports in the service sector? You see imports uh, continue to grow at 52.7. However, it has come down a bit and that's to be expected uh, because imports has the longer cycle time. We know things were gearing up for the holiday season. So we can expect that to stay in that same range of the, around the 50 baseline. And exports uh, came up 9.3 percentage points from 38.4, but that's still in contraction territory of 47.7. And again, keep in mind that is what's going on with global markets. Uh, global markets we know are definitely distressed and we're doing much better than say the European market. What is exported out of this sector? Uh, particularly, I can point to two things. Uh, one is information and the other is professional scientific and technical services, management of companies and support services, another one that exports, but it's a small percentage compared to what we see on the manufacturing side. It's around that 30% of our respondents say they do any kind of exporting and it's all in that knowledge management field. It's less reliant on, again, commodities versus uh, it, it, there's more leeway in pricing of uh, uh, consulting and that type of thing in management. And we know that some retail gets exported, but not much. Again, it's a small portion uh, relate, relative to this uh, particular sector. You always have to ask one of those industries within the services sector, we find it a curiosity and love to know how it's doing. And that's mining. How's mining been performing? Well, great question. I look at mining and uh, I'll turn to my information here to give you a specific as to where it stands in the um, within the 18 industries. It's, um, we always, uh, Tim and I talk about mining, construction, uh, where it would be. Mining is at uh, right in the middle of the pack as far as growth on the composite index side. So it's- I uh, vote I vote for moving mining over to the manufacturing report. Well, we can do that. You have my vote. Mining, okay. say construction, just, you know, that, that's I right. would only say you can have real estate rental and leasing on the down months. I'll take it on the upside. <laughs> <laughs> so about uh, mid-December, we had a conversation with you on the semi-annual forecast, and it it appeared consistent with what we have had in conversations with other economists that the first half of the year was going to be soft and the second half of the year for 2023 would gain strength. Is there anything in this report, even though there's some drops of 10 points here and there, that would indicate anything other than what we've already talked to you about back in December? I, I think this monthly report, uh, even though it was surprising to see the contraction on the composite, is consistent uh, with what, uh, what our respondents have said in that semi-annual, as well as what they've been saying uh, leading up to it. Uh, and you just uh, summarized it very well. Uh, Tim and I, when we spoke with you gentlemen on the semi-annual, we both were um, feeling the same thing, that even if we hit this contraction period, that it wouldn't be long and drawn out. It would be more of a soft landing. There's just too many positive variables in the mix right now. Unless something happens that 
is unforeseen in the next few months. And I believe we could possibly see some contraction next month as well, but I, I don't think it'll last. I think we'll come out of it uh, pretty quickly uh, as long as uh, things stay in a positive direction as they have been. One of the things that uh, uh, we see uh, in the manufacturing report is that uh, from the 15th of, the de of December to the 15th of January, you know, it's, it's holiday and travel time and vacation time and so on. But come January 15th, it's like all of a sudden they open up the floodgates and manufact new manufacturing orders are, um, they're flowing. So we're, we wait very anxiously for the 15th uh, to see that happen. Is that similar in the services side? Definitely. I, I think that's the typical historic trend that we've seen, historical trend we've seen in the past, other than the last few years because of the pandemic, because of the pent up demand uh, it was, you know, a bit of an anomaly as of uh, much of an anomaly, I should say, uh, as how things went. We didn't have that lull last January, if you remember, it was still building, it was still building up uh, and that release of that demand. Now we've seen the demand just wane a bit, which we normally see at this juncture. Um, you know, looking at inventories, you know, that's a that's a good piece to look at. Even though inventories is not, uh, it's not as reliant on this sector is not as reliant on inventories as manufacturing. Forty five point one, uh, it's coming down, it's contracting even further, two point eight percentage points down. But then go to inventory sentiment, fifty five point nine. How do you explain that? I will. It's basically saying that, and this is from the responding comments directly, they're burning off their inventory. It's year end, fiscal period, right? They also had excess by increasing those order quantities in the past. There's still the uh, protective equipment, the PPE that they're still looking to get rid of. Um, there's SKUs they're reducing, you know, volume quantities on. Yet the sentiment index, what that question asks, how are your inventory levels correlated to your business requirements? They're saying they're too high. So that's why we have that dichotomy right there. So they lower inventories to help deal with tax issues or potential that's, tax issues. That too. And we know cash liquidity, cash flow as well. Sure, sure. Anthony, one of the areas that tends to be a leading indicator of what's happening in the general economy is transportation. How is that sector doing? So the transportation and warehousing, it's, uh, and I'll tell you exactly where that is. It's coming in, in contract, it's in the, excuse me, it's in the growth territory. So it's not quite at the top of the list, came in at 53. Um, you know, the other good one to look at besides the transportation and warehousing which is the wholesale trade. So the wholesale trade, and this is what's going to be uh, surprising, they're in contraction territory. See, the wholesale trade is the time and place value add for us in the services sector. Remote disparate locations, moving the product from the manufacturer or the source or the grower, whomever that might be, they're the intermodal piece there. They're the, the, they take it to the back door of the location, whatever that might be, whatever industry it might be. So that kind of is in sync with that little bit of slowdown that we've seen uh, reflected by the uh, composite index. Anthony, employment has been a pain point for everybody uh, for quite some time. And we've been kind of waiting for that to uh, soften, if you will, to resolve a bit. How is it doing in the service sector in general and in your sector healthcare in particular? Well, it, it, I pointed this out that healthcare, they're still trying to backfill positions. They can't find uh, the clinicians. There's certain industries that are like that. When you look at all the industries out there and I'll turn to the employment index and tell you uh, specifically uh, which companies we had uh, the companies that reflected growth, arts, entertainment, recreation, retail, trade, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, transportation and warehousing, and professional scientific technical services. The rest of that was uh, what we see as uh, 
seven companies that were unchanged or nine companies were unchanged month over month. We had four that contracted. We had management of companies and support services, real estate, rental and leasing, as we know, wholesale trade and uh, healthcare is right there, right on the cusp. So um, two of the largest, uh, two of the five largest contributors to GDP of reflecting contraction uh, for the month of uh, December. So they're beginning to bring down headcount. I'm assuming most of it is through uh, attrition, uh, you know, letting people go who want to go or change jobs. I, I haven't heard much in the news that they are aggressively reducing their workforce. We've had, we've seen it in the tech world where they're reducing headcount. We've seen it in some of the online companies. So it's a combination of, you know, healthcare is showing contraction for the month, yet it's not because they don't want to hire. They just don't have the labor pool versus another industry such as real estate, rental and leasing just doesn't have that activity. So there's, there's that, that dichotomy, as I was mentioning, whereas some other companies, uh, they just can't get enough accommodation and food services. Some of the more tedious type uh, industries have trouble backfilling positions. Retail trade grew. Uh, we might see that come down post holiday. You know, time will tell where that shows up, where that where that winds up. I should say. Great, great. Again, I just want to remind listeners that the full report can be uh, viewed at ismworld.org. And if you are surfing the web, check out Manufacturing Talk Radio. Just type it into Google and you'll find it on all of the major listening platforms. You can see the show on YouTube. Anthony, as always, thank you for joining us each month and sharing more detail about what is happening in the services sector. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Happy New Year to all. And I look forward to our conversation next month. Be well, be healthy, be safe. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Take care. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.